Hi, I'm Phil Hill, and welcome to eLiterate TV's series on personalized learning. In the last episode, we learned about UC Davis and their experimentation with personalized learning within large lecture classes. In this episode, we'll find out about the specific changes they've made. Rather than starting with technology, the IM STEM group and several faculty members in chemistry and biology started with the concept of active learning. With this approach, students have to take more responsibility for their own learning, actively participating in discussions and in group activities. I started teaching general chemistry um, in fall of 2013. And just from my experience in trying to teach my students, I, I felt like they weren't getting the material as well as I thought they should be. And so I started becoming interested in what could I change about my instruction so that they actually understand the material. Okay, and, so purely based on your experience with your course. Yeah, and then the I Am STEM Hub approached me and said, hey, would you like to try these new things in your class? And I said, yes. And then I became part of the I Am STEM group. <laughs> You got pulled in. I got pulled in. Chemistry isn't so fortunate to um, have adopted the OLI type of system where they have quizzes before discussion. Um, I've been working with the TAs in my section just pretty lightly to get them to develop some more teaching skills where they do call on their students, they engage their students in the learning process, and really try to address where their students' misconceptions are rather than just guessing about where their students are struggling. And in my classroom, I've been having students complete homework before coming to class. Mm -hmm. So we have homework due three times a week. And I look at the homework before class and say like, oh, these are the problems that they're having trouble with. These are the problems that they're not having problems with. So I can breeze over the, the types of problems that they're fine with and then focus on the harder problems that they're not quite understanding. Focus on the conceptual background, have in-class discussions about the, the concepts behind the material, focus on the harder problems. And I use clickers, the um, personal response systems, to kind of gauge their understanding in class. And if they're understanding the material, like everyone's responding correctly with the clicker, we move on. And if they're struggling, you can pretty clearly see it because they're just randomly guessing. In biology, the UC Davis team applied the same learning principles, but also included personalized learning software in the mix. The Open Learning Initiative, or OLI, is a grant-funded group at Carnegie Mellon University that started in 2001. UC Davis is using the OLI platform within the discussion sections of the redesigned biology course. Uh, sure, so in biology, we started at the level of the teaching assistants who are the ones that the students spend the majority of their face time with. Um, and they're also the ones that we had the most control over because we had um, kind of more say mm -hmm. over what the, the teaching assistants do than what the instructors do. Uh, and so we went into the introductory biology course here and did a rigorous um, practice-based training program where we trained the TAs on various techniques that have evidence um, of effectiveness in increasing student learning. And from that, we, we then have expanded into working with the instructors in that same biology course. And what are some, of, if you had to summarize what the changes, you know, the evident, the learning-based changes that have been made, what, how would you describe them? I guess if I had to sum it up, I'd say keeping the students accountable in class. Um, so we trained the TAs to, it sounds very simple, but call on the students, um, make the students know that they are responsible for having the knowledge in class time, in real time, and practice. Come prepared. Where now we have online learning initiative, OLI, as like a pre-lab, and this is a set of somewhere between 15 to maybe 25 questions that they do online on their own, and it doesn't take the time from the TAs to grade that so that there's more questions that they can be asked and be doing on their own time. Sure. Do you also get feedback from the system? You know, you, so the students OLI are, system? Yeah, from OLI. So um, we have a head TA who's in charge of um, going over OLI, but I as myself 
don't do the grading for it, but I do get a readout of what questions they're having the most difficult time with and what questions they felt comfortable with. And so then I look at that from each week we have a set of pre-discussions too, and I look at the results from that, and then I see the questions that most of my class had a difficulty with, and then I cover that in the next discussion. So I address maybe the top three questions out of 15 or so that they had problems with, and I go over, do you understand why this is the correct answer and why what you said is not correct? So one thing that's awesome is that they get immediate response to whether I push a button and it tells me right there, did I push the correct button for the correct answer or not? And that immediate feedback I think is very helpful because otherwise these students were answering these questions, you know, maybe a week before they would turn it into me. And then I would go over the answers in discussion, but that lapse in time between when they first thought about the question and when they get the answer to it, I think it's really good to have that immediate response between the two. One of the biggest concepts that we've been um, that, that have been emphasized towards us. We have uh, TA meetings for two hours every week uh, before our discussions, and part of that is to go over the material for the week, and especially with some of the TAs that are not in the exact field that that week's discussion is on. They, they need a we, we need a little bit of review on that. But uh, the other part is sort of understanding how we should be approaching teaching because a lot of the time, it, 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 a lot of discussions, a lot of especially early on uh, in, in lower division classes, the, the approach has frequently been just lecture. Basically me ha having the students standing up with our backs to the class, writing up on the wall and, or writing up on the board and that's not the most effective way to communicate an idea to the students. So we go over techniques like uh, cold calling where we, we actively involve the students. I, I will say most of a sentence and call on a student at random to, to complete it, or I will ask a question and involve the students, and this gives me both a good way to, to gauge whether they understand, and it keeps them all on their toes. In the large lectures themselves, the team has been applying techniques to personalize this most impersonal of experiences. Faculty members call on students within groups during the lectures. Anyone can be on the spot while teaching assistants roam the class helping students as they work through the material. So I think that would be the biggest contrast, is that we're really driving at concepts, asking questions, and not just sitting passively and, uh, and trying to soak up and regurgitate what I've, what I've said for the last 50 minutes. Sure. So it's, it's, it's been very uh, minimalistic on, on, in terms of technology. So, uh, but what, we, what we've done is to uh, work with uh, the people on the IM STEM group here um, and, and get some of their ideas about uh, how to develop and present content, uh, how to uh, develop our assessments. We've spent a lot of time on assessments and linking assessments directly to learning goals. So we had loose learning goals before, but we spent now a lot, a lot of time thinking about what is it that we really, what are the skills that we really want them to have and, and pare those down. And, and uh, we spent also a lot of time uh, trying to link those directly to our assessments and, and a lot of more thought about how we're assessing what our learning goals are. So that, and, if, uh, and we, we give that information to the students and we really drive it home every week. Uh, and so to help them out, we also give them uh, uh, what we call pre-lecture study guides and post-lecture study guides. So the, the pre-lecture guides are, are there, you know, we always tell the students, come prepared to class. I've heard you mention two things that are interesting to me that in terms of Students at this point are more comfortable, you know, with you asking them questions. And then at this point, they can do such and such, which sort of implies that students take a, this is a transition for them, that it's a, not just the content, but learning how to handle this type of class. So could you talk a little bit about what students experience by doing this class? Well, I'd say, I'm actually going to say how I experienced it too. The first day of class, when I did a cold call. So we have little stickers under our seats where, so we're calling on a group. So we're not identifying a student by name. It's like group 25, and if you're sitting in a set of seats with 25, that's your, your call. And initially, someone walking up to them with a mic or something, it'd be like they'd be ducking for cover, right? Um, at this point in the quarter, they're not doing that. Mm -hmm. So they're becoming, like I said, I think it's a comfort level that they're more secure about talking in front of their peers. Uh, the, um, I find that they are 
interacting more with, you know, it used to be that they talked to just the people right next to them, but now the person behind is getting involved and they're, they're, they're forming their clusters sure. of people talking. So I think the idea of science as a group activity is coming home to them. We, we try to have them doing sketching because, you know, if you have two scientists together, what do they do? They pull out a piece of paper and they start writing. And so we've been trying to get them to do that sketching of their ideas because and they'll do that. So when they come to me in office hours now, um, I'll say, well, where's your sketchbook? Where's your drawings? Why don't you sketch it out for me? Because it's amazing how when they show you a picture of their concept of something. You can see what, if they understand it or what their concept is. And then you can ask them, oh, your drawing is fine, but over here, mm -hmm. what are you trying to depict here? And I think that that's one of the things that we're giving them is that that's how scientists interact. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like I said, I've never been to a meeting where you know, you're sitting at lunch and you're not pulling out a piece of paper or a napkin and starting to sketch. And I think the students are getting that same experience. For the past several years, the team at UC Davis has been steadily redesigning the Intro to Chemistry and Intro to Biology courses, pulling students into an active learning process. These changes have shown up in the discussion sections, in a flipped classroom approach, and even in the large lecture classes. Students have new responsibilities to come to class prepared, having read the pre-lecture guides or completed the OLI activities. In the next episode, we'll take a deeper look at the benefits they've seen so far, as well as the barriers that they must overcome if they want to spread this approach throughout more of the curriculum.